Live MLW boys recently met up with the We Got Ice boys at the John Boy Media Warehouse. And all of a sudden, there is now possibly a draft that is going to see Jack Doyle and Zodimalia enter MLW. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video on the AJ Plays channel. And today I am bringing you what I am interpreting out of the recent collaboration between the We Got Ice guys, both uh, Jack Doyle and Zodimalia, and then the MLW boys. Uh, it was Jordan Robles, Kyle Schultz, Drew Davis, Jimmy Norman, Tommy Coughlin the third. those five off to the welts, and they recorded quite a bit of content, it's all over TikTok and Instagram, you see the collaboration that these boys have had, I mean, We Got Ice recently has been surging, like I've seen them at the Winter Classic the other day, Charlie McAvoy, Bruin star defenseman, hit a bomb off of Jack Doyle, like even if I gave up the bomb, I'd still be absolutely honored to have a legend hit a home run off of me and i'm a toronto fan what i interpret out of this collaboration is that it can mean a lot more than just these two guys meeting up in the like these two groups meeting up in the offseason no it can mean that these guys can enter mlw and possibly alter the landscape of the entire mlw league they can definitely change stuff up in mlw let me get started so for those of you who don't exactly know who we got ice is those guys they actually have a little bit so they recently made a lot of traction on tiktok and especially through youtube i saw them for the first time in about october 2022 like the start of october and ever since then it's like uh different kinds of videos wiffle ball blitz ball videos uh strike zone roulette challenges uh, bat roulette challenges and it's usually jack doyle on the mound versus zoe damalia uh, at the plate those two guys head to head it's just two buddies making content but they've exploded in popularity and they have been absolutely potent over the last few months on YouTube. They make very great content, guys. I highly recommend checking them out. And if you haven't checked them out yet, I'm sorry, there's an issue. Now, those two in particular, it's not just the content that they make. They are also very talented whifflers, if I have to say so myself. First off, Jack Doyle, his arsenal is absolutely lethal. He's got all kinds of different pitches and he can really locate them really damn well. We've seen him locate pitches on tiny strike zones, big strike zones. We've seen him locate all kinds of stuff. He's got an arsenal and he's also a two-way player. Actually, both of them are. Moving on to like uh, Lorenzo, who's Odemalia. Him, like him especially, he's honestly, he can hit for both contact and power. And he's got quite a bit of play discipline. And you know what? There's a lot of teams in MLW that can use a hitter like that. Why am I saying a lot of teams in MLW? Personally, both of those guys are two weird kinds of players. And I kind of think that, you know what? With this collaboration now, they've been in contact with MLW. MLW is very well aware of those guys. I feel like those two could very well be the top two picks in the 2023 MLW draft. I can see Jack Doyle, two-way player. I personally think he could end up going number one overall to the Mallards and his pitching and hitting ability can unite with Tommy Coughlin and Jordan Robles and that could become a dynasty in the making. Because with one more piece like Jack, I feel like those guys can easily go ahead and win the 2023 World Series right now. I personally think Jack is going to get drafted number one overall. And as much as I would love for him to go number two overall to the Metro Magic, you know what? Lorenzo D'Amalio would be perfect for a team like the Magic. And you know what? Anybody right now would be a good fit for the Magic because we need help. First off, what does this mean for the Mallards? If Jack Doyle gets drafted number one overall, this means both... On the mound, you have a now one-two combo of Jack Doyle and Jordan Robles. That is absolutely insane. Plus, depth if you need it, you got Brendan Davenport and Caden Irwin still. And then at the plate, you have a three-man lineup now of Jack Doyle, Jordan Robles, and Tommy Coughlin the third. Tommy, who had a really good bounce-back season last year, and Jordan Robles, who was absolutely insane. That three as a lineup, and then those two on the mound, the Mallards could honestly walk through the league next season. I'm not even joking. And it's possible to fly these guys out because they do it with Jordan Robles. He's flown out to every single event, all-star events, the Oklahoma series, every series that the Mallards have played and the playoffs. Jordan Robles has made it out to every single series, every single MLW event that involves him. He's been able to do that. So why can't they do that with Jack Doyle and Lorenzo D uh, D'Amalia? They should have no problem doing that and they should be able to make that happen. Now, moving on to Lorenzo and what it can mean for the Magic, there's been a little bit of a debate recently that Trevor Bonham as a pitcher has fallen off. Honestly, not really, because you know what? The Mallards kind of rocked him in that last series, but to be fair, the Mallards probably know him really well because Tommy Coughlin and Caden Irwin were with him when you know they had to learn about his arsenal and they were like working with Bonham and now they're working against Bonham. Meanwhile, the Wildcats have always had Bonham's number. So his second half, you can't say, oh, he's, oh, we, we can't just absolutely ignore the second half, but it doesn't mean that he's a terrible pitcher. Because if you look at the first half against the Eagles, Cobras and Predators, 
against those three teams, Trevor Bonham absolutely carried the Magic and dragged them to at least have a chance to win wiffle ball games. Keeping the Culver's down to like zero runs across five innings for every single game that he pitched. He did really well against the Eagles, limiting them to, I believe, like two runs when he was on the mound. Trevor Bonham is a good pitcher still. He can honestly be really solid in MLW. As for hitting, we need to improve. We don't have any potent hitters like we used to. Chadwick is, has fallen off, but he's not even here anymore. Lorenzo Damalia fits that role perfectly. So a, a fantastic play discipline as, as we see in the We Got Ice um, videos. Then he's also got great contact, great power. He'd be a great acquisition and a big piece. One, probably the number one hitter in that lineup accompanied by Jordan Curdy and Liam Jackson. Not the greatest lineup, but you know what? It's definitely a start. And we've seen that Bonham has potential to do great things in MLW. Hopefully he can, you know what, revisit that uh, 2021 magic success that he had. Hopefully he can, you know, bring some of that hitting back and maybe they can get back on track. Lorenzo Damalia still has a, a pretty solid arsenal. He still has all kinds of pitches that he mixes in. He's still a very good whiffler on the on the mound rather than just at the plate. If these guys get drafted into MLW, then obviously there's still other teams with draft picks. Wildcats and Eagles have top four picks. The Preds, Cobras, Diamondbacks, Mallers all have another pick in the bottom half of the uh, 2023 draft board. If Jack and Lorenzo get drafted into MLW, they will definitely shake stuff up. They're going to be the top two picks, probably two of the best draft picks out of the 2023 MLW draft class. If they can make it into the league, then from there, I think everybody's got to look out. Even for the Magic now, they got to look out because Lorenzo is a fantastic hitter. The guy, he can do really well. We've seen what he can do against Jack, who's got a fantastic arsenal. He's a lethal pitcher. And if the, the Mallards at Jack, then the Mallards should be a lock to win the 2023 World Series. That's all I'm going to say right here. That is why I think that, you know what, the 2022-23 collaboration between the MLW guys and We Got Ice, those, that collaboration means a lot more than just, you know, publicity across both channels and, you know, guys getting to know each other. It means a lot more than that. I feel like these uh, these boys could be very well drafted into the next MLW draft. And honestly, definitely in the top four, I can see them going. I can definitely see them becoming top draft picks in the 2023 MLW draft. And if they make it into the league, then everybody's got to watch out because those two are absolutely lethal guys that cannot be taken lightly. They are completely dominant and we've seen it before. They could be utterly fantastic. With all that being said, guys, those are my opinions for today on why the uh, the collaboration between We Got Ice and MLW is so much more meaningful than we actually think. With that all being said, I want to thank you guys all very much for watching this one. I'm going to see you guys all next time. Peace out, y'all.